So good morning and welcome to this Flourish workshop. I'm joined today by Vicky Galligan from Belton Marketing Wigan. Vicky's uh, run a number of workshops for us as part of our digital creative and marketing series. Uh, these are bolt-on courses to our Time to Grow programmes and LE programmes and they're running throughout spring of 2022. If you're interested in looking at any of the other sessions, then uh, go to the playlist on YouTube um, for Creative Digital Marketing Spring 2022, and you'll see there's a range of options there for you to view. So I'll hand over to Vicky, who's going to be talking to us today about social media marketing. Thank you very much, Shelley. Um, I'm really pleased to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, my name is Vicky Galligan, um, and I set up Belting Marketing Wigan two years ago now. Um, during the pandemic, uh, I ended up, I, I was working as a magazine editor at the time. I've um, got a background in journalism and, and teaching as well. I spent a few years as primary school teaching. And um, in the pandemic, I decided to, to, to go forth and set out on my own because I really wanted to help um, small businesses and uh, social enterprises and community groups, that kind of thing with marketing. Um, I'd spent some time volunteering uh, locally in Shevington in Wigan and a lot of the groups didn't even have Facebook pages or Twitter accounts or um, they, they were okay with the email sort of lists and getting in touch with people via email but they didn't have much of a presence on social media so I've helped, um, I've helped them with that and it's really increased engagement. So yeah, well, today we're going to look at, at, at sort of how you can use social media to your advantage as well. And um, the, lots of the things that we're going to talk about today are free. Some, some cost a little bit of money, but they're fairly affordable because like yourselves, I don't like spending a lot of money on the, things like extra added programs, apps, um, websites, it all adds up the costs um, for, for running social media and doing your marketing. So I'll try and keep costs as low as possible, keep it affordable. So um, at the end of the session, you will have an action plan on how to sort of improve your marketing on social media. And you can fill that in as you go along. It might take a month, it might take six months, but if you keep going back to the action plan and just checking off things and trying to push yourself a little bit further, then um, you should see a big improvement. The aim of the session is to create a recognised brand and become more familiar with different social media platforms um, and to feel more confident in attracting new customers via the social media channels. We will cover a little bit of websites as well and a bit of SEO on websites which is search engine optimization. So why should you bother with social media? Um, well, the aim of social media is to increase your business. That's um, the long and short of it, isn't it? We want to improve the communication with customers, get them to buy more things, place more bookings, make more payments, speak to you more often, give more feedback. There is a benefit in this to you, but there's also a benefit to your customers. They will be able to tell quite simply from going to your Facebook page um, what your business is about, what your ethos is, what you're doing and why you're doing it as well. There's also a benefit to your beneficiaries. So anybody who's got an invested interest in your business, it could be you, it, it, you because obviously you make money from your business. It could be um, your family because they're benefiting from you, bringing in an income. It could be the colleagues that you that you're working with or volunteers because either they're getting paid or they're getting um, volunteer experience and they're giving back to the community. It could be local businesses. If your business is thriving, then. Uh, I always use the example of a street front. If, you're, if you've got a really busy shop and you're driving football, footfall on your street, then the shop next door is going to be getting more customers and the shop next door to that. And it works online as well if you're collaborating with people and they get to know somebody else through you. And of course, wider society, because if you're a social enterprise or um, you're working in, in that arena, then 
you've got a social value, haven't you? Your business has a social value. So the more business that you can do, the better um, the impact on society. So there, there's lots of reasons that, um, that we should be using social media effectively. So the session's got three parts. The, the first part, um, we're going to look at graphics, branding and pitches, sort of setting out your stall for your, for your um, business. Part two is, is the nitty gritty of social media platforms. So we'll go into the differences between each platform and uh, which ones you might want to focus on because with all the will in the world, it's very difficult to, to cover all different social media platforms that are out there and there are tons. Part three is exploring content and sort of making your content really juicy so that people want to read it and stay engaged. And then we're going to finish with a bit of um, SEO, search engine optimization and email marketing. Um, and SEO isn't just good for if you've got a website, it's also good to drive people for you to your Facebook or your Instagram pages because any social media pages really, because Google will direct people there if they're searching for your business. They haven't got a website, they'll direct you to Google will direct you to the um to the socials instead. So um, first of all, we were just right at the beginning of, of uh, the session before we sort of started recording. Shelley was asking people how they've got on um, with the social media so far. Um, and I wanted to just ask that question again about have you have you got a logo? Have you started thinking about um, a branding palette yet? Or have you set up social media channels? Um, have you already started marketing on on social media so uh, if you just want to put in the chat where, where you're sort of up to with social media at the moment and then we can i'll get a better idea really of um of where you're at have you got a, a facebook page for your business or have you just got a personal page where you're sort of putting things out on your own personal pages or are you not there yet at all Will there be any break? Yes, yes, there will definitely be um, at least three, I think, breaks throughout the session, yeah. Yeah. So has anyone got started on social media yet? Oh, Kirsty said, I've got a meeting on one day with an old friend who's a graphic artist to look at logo design. I'm just at the start of my journey. Well, Kirsty, that's a brilliant place to start with your logo. It really is, um, because that has a knock-on effect on all of your marketing. Um, and it, some people are quite particular about the logo. Some people just want to bang one up. But if you if you think carefully about it and try to stick with the same logo sort of throughout your journey, if possible, then that's really helpful for for your branding. I'm just going to come off mute if that's all right. Yes, Can you yes. Me? <laughs> yes. Go for it. I'm really fussy about logos. So we did the Canva session and I really like Canva and I like designing my own graphics and the social media posts and stuff. But yeah. I, I don't feel like I'm capable of producing a logo that kind of meets my own standards, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I've reconnected with a friend who's a graphic artist and she's actually... um. Uh, an art teacher in a sixth form college in London. So I just thought she might be able to bring some fresh ideas um, and some, because I'm not really sure what I want and I just could do with somebody else's kind of input and inspiration. So that's why I've decided to go down that route. But my company's called Yellow Beacon. So I'm thinking there's going to be some yellow in there somewhere. That's a really good name because I don't think there's any other yellow beacons out there, is there? That's a really good name. Um, uh, yeah, I, th I think the most important thing to consider is your with your logo is to try and keep it try and keep it simple, but incorporate all the things that you that you that, that represent your business, which is really difficult. It's not easy, but just imagine um, when you're on social media and for people on phones, your logo gets shrunk to quite a tiny, small little thing. So. Yeah. You might end up with a variety of logos as well, like a dead small, simple one, 
and then a bigger one with a bit more um fluff around it and you know yeah. a bit more graphic and arty I'm not very yeah. arty so it's, it's to say no. I do a lot of graphic designing now I'm not I, I'm not very arty and I rely a lot on templates um which just goes to show that you, you can do it but I think you're right to contact a graphic artist if you if you want something that's specific to you and you want to change things on it and yeah and I think once I've got the logo and like some color designs then I'll be fine doing all the other stuff on Canva myself because I quite yeah. like doing that sort of stuff so we'll see what happens <laughs> watch Brilliant. this space Good luck with it, Kirsty. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Marie says she's on the start of her journey as well. No website, no social media engagement yet. Oh, that's good because um, that's where we we sort of we'll we'll go through everything from the right from the beginning. Um, good. Okay. So I did podcast planning and started doing some recording, but haven't released anything yet. Podcasts are really good um, marketing tools so that's that's brilliant I, I i am going to run a podcast session eventually um because i've just learned how to do it and i've put one out and i can teach it now <laughs> so uh, if anyone needs a hand with that let me know so um yeah if, if, if you start with your logo and um, consult consider a color scheme a few design elements like um shapes um symbols and kind of have a think about what you want to represent in that logo so for me I wanted something really really simple uh, at the beginning I just started off with this top left hand um logo with three colors very monochrome black white and gray um, and I brought in the yellow as well because I wanted it to sort of stand out and I wanted a contrasting colour, but something that was quite kind of cheery and bright. So I went with the yellow. And it took me a year to introduce another colour, which was this kind of red, kind of orangey red colour that I brought in. Um, so the 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 idea of using the same color palette is that your branding is instantly recognizable then so if you can try and stick to these colors you might you might have more colors than that you might have 10 colors uh, flourish has got um, a really good branding palette so there's kind of like a rainbow of colors but they stick to the exact same shades so that whatever um they're producing people who are using the, the branding guidelines can stick to those colours. And there's something called hex colours in um, digital marketing, uh, uh, in printing. So every single shade in the rainbow has got its own hex colour and it's a six digit number. So on Canva, if you create something and click on the colour box, and you can do this in other programmes as well, you can find the hex colour for that particular shade. And if you write down the hex numbers um, of your colors, once you've decided on them, then you can give that to any printer, graphic designer, or you can use it in different programs as you're creating. And you know that you're gonna match up your um, exact shade of yellow, for example, exact, exactly to, to, to the rest of your uh, branding. Because there's nothing worse than if, if you've got a real mismatch of all different shades of yellow you know for example on on your branding it just doesn't it doesn't look great um and you can use these going forward in all your content memes leaflets um you you um or, or your digital marketing on your website and your customers just then start recognizing so if they see something on social media, if they're scrolling through and they see these colours and your logos there, they immediately associate your content with your, your brand. Um, so that this has a knock-on effect because um, I always think about like the Coke effect, the Coca-Cola effect. Everybody knows what the Coca-Cola lo logo looks like. And if you if you look at it in history, it's barely changed in like what I think it's about 130 years or something they've been going um the colors have always been the same they've always had that red black and white coloring but people recognize that logo worldwide and if you see in the distance you know um a vending machine with the coat logo on or a lorry 
or anything advert on TV, you, you automatically start thinking about Coke and you kind of think, oh, I could, I could do with a Coke right now. And, and that's, the, that's the effect that it has. It start, makes you start to think about that brand and their product. So they be also have a lot of trust in branding. People have trust in branding. So um, if they see you, your business is doing really well and you, you've got, you're starting to build up clients and you're getting good feedback and they're seeing that on social media, they, they really start to trust you. And that's how people do business with you, basically, when they, when they, when they trust you. There's, there's um, a strategy called... Uh, as we've talked about it before, I think it's called something like the five degrees of trust or the speed of trust. And it's about how um, it takes a certain amount of time and um, conversation to get somebody to trust you. And this, the quicker that you can get somebody to trust you properly, then the quicker they'll become a customer. Um, so if you are going to make any changes to your branding once you've set it all up, Say six months down the line, you decide to go for a different color scheme or you've decided to change your logo. I would just try and do this slowly and carefully. So I'll just introduce an extra color or two extra colors. Um, if your logo is changing, then try and make it reflect the old logo. But, you know, um, it may be keep the same colors. Because of the danger of making too many changes is that pe people will stop recognizing your brand and they might kind of become disengaged with you or if they're searching through the scroll, the scrolling through the feed and they see a different logo on a different brand, they might think, I can't remember following them. When did I when did I follow them? And you know, you might lose followers. So just be careful. Um, it can also really jar. So like with your Instagram feed, for example, and you've got all your posts up and people look at your grid. If you go from changing your branding completely, you might go from like using four or five shades of blues and greens at the bottom of your grid. And then the top of your grid's all sort of reds and yellows. It, it just, it, it jars a little bit on social media. It's not very consistent. So just try and be quite careful with branding and try and be really kind of sure about what you want before you start. Also, change is really time consuming. So say if you do decide to change a logo, you've got to go through all your social media channels, change a logo. You might have to do it on documents that you're using on your computer, like Word, Word documents. Um, you might have a website. You might have already printed leaflets or posters or banners and then you know, it's a bit of a waste of money if you have to replace them. So just try and be really sure of, of, of your branding before you crack on. And there's some branding quick wins um, here. There's a, an example of some branding that I did for a local um, pub where they already had a really good logo, the crown, um, and that sort of reflected the, the sort of crown shape at the top. The window with it's a very old building, so they've reflected the history with the window in the all. Um, and they've used some nice funky fonts. And the, their color scheme was nice and simple, black and white. So we we just created some really good shots of the food. We started using the same filter on the photographs. That's really good way of getting consistency across all your images. And you could do that on Canva. You can put the filters on on Canva and you can adjust how um, heavy you want the filter, whether you want it to be like a 20% filter or an 80% filter. Um, try and stick your logo on the graphics as well. Um, if you're creating something on Canva, I would always 100% of the time try and get your logo on it, for, for not just for the fact that people will recognise your logo more often, but also because people are thieving and they are starting to steal pictures and graphics from um, social media content creators and try and pass it off as their own on, on their own um, social media channels. And it might not be anybody you know, it could be somebody from the other side of the world, but if they find your, your design uh, and they like it and they need to quickly bang up a post on there, social media then pe people are stealing designs so if you've got your logo on then you you you're kind of making sure that that's not going to happen 
Oh, thank you, Kirsty. That's really uh, uh, nice. She says she loves the designs. Thank you. Um, yeah, it, it, and it, it was quite simple, really, to try and follow the font then in the design. The black and white, black and white works really well as a as a, a color scheme because it's so striking and um, it's easy to read as well. The, another good example here is. Um, a restaurant, a local restaurant, who I, I really liked what they did with the N in the logo. They made it backwards and then they took that backwards N and started using it on the designs as well in the background or like just fading it out, uh, sticking it over the food shops. And um, I thought that worked really well because again, it's a recognisable colour scheme and um, branding on all of the, the, all of the pictures. Uh, I'm just going to go back there because I think I've skipped a bit. So, yeah, if it, on a standout post, I'll go through it a little bit more. But on a, what I call it for a standout post, a standout post is something that you're going to take, take quite a bit of time over. It might take you half an hour to do this post, um, but it's you're creating it for maximum reach. So I would definitely start with a headline and some additional text. You can do this on your graphics as well. If you've got a headline, and then a little bit of extra information. It draws the eye to the graphic and then people will want to read a little bit more. Um, and the aim of the game on social media is to try and get people to stay on your post for as long as possible because that boosts the algorithms. Then Facebook algorithms or patterns, basically, are you, you, how people are using social media. So you'll probably notice yourself, if you click on an advert or look just look at an advert for 10 seconds, you'll keep seeing it again and again in your feed. And that's because Facebook knows that you're interested in it then. Um, so if you give your phone to a child for five minutes, you come up, you keep getting some really strange adverts. Um, because the kid's been on it for a, a while looking at this and then you're getting the same, you're getting the adverts then because Facebook thinks it, it was you that liked it. Um, if you've got um, the capacity to do some animations and make something move on your uh, graphic, then brilliant. Canva does this as well, Canva Pro. There's lots of other um, apps that you can use, graphics apps to do this. Pixel Loop is one of them. And um, Pixel Loop um, is about £17, I think, for the year. But you can do some really cool things with graphics. So you can put like a photo of somebody on outside and you can make like butterflies fly out of the head or you can make the clouds in the sky move or the water ripple and that kind of effect. It's really clever. Uh, for, but for free versions, Spark Video is a really simple way of making, making a video. Uh, it's an Adobe product, it's free, and you can put pictures, captions, music on there. You can do, you can record yourself speaking or film some footage as well. Canva Pro, again, is good for video editing, and there's really good stock of pictures and sounds and video clips on, on Canva Pro. So if you're a not-for-profit and you've registered as a not-for-profit, you can get a free Canva Pro account. Um, you can just apply, just sign up for the free version and apply for a free Canva Pro uh, not-for-profit account. Uh, it does work. I've done it for a couple of clients. You just have to submit certain documents like your, um, you, to, to the, the certification that you're a not-for-profit and you have to explain a little bit about what you do. And there's a good Facebook community as well called Canva Not-for-Profit, which is just basically a Facebook um, group where people share their designs um, and ask questions as well on how to do things. It's really good. So if, if you pay for the Canva Pro version, it's about £100 a year or um, you can pay it monthly. But I basically create everything that I create graphics wise is done on Canva. Um, it's it's a brilliant tool. Pexels is another good website for free stock picks. So sometimes you're a bit limited on Canva as to what stock picks you've got. If you can't find the exact picture, and by stock pick I mean um, a library of pictures, you know, photographs. So Pexels is a free site that you can download any picture on there for free. They sometimes ask you to say thank you to the photographer or 
tag them into the post, to, which gives them a bit of publicity. But you have got, you will have the, the rights to use the, the photograph if you download from Pexels. Um, now, not not every post that you do is going to be branded like, like this. These are just for the standout posts where you're going to spend some real time on them. Uh, oh, Kirsty says, I used to be an assistant video editor in a previous career in television. I could utilize my skills. Yes, and you could probably sell them as well because people go mad for videos and it's it's not an easy thing to do. Um, thanks for posting that link up as well, Shelley. Um, but, and you will be posting up quick posts in between, like quick photographs if you've if you, um, got a selfie or you want to take a picture of where you are that day. You've got to share news, pictures, um, et cetera. But I try and get a standout post like this in, say, every week um, that look, so that you've got your branding going up um, consistently. So we're, we're going to talk about pictures now because it's important when you're creating social media platforms and it, any marketing materials that that you've got your pitch right so your sales pitch is all about getting your message across quickly and effectively so when somebody meets you and they say oh so what do you do you sort of tell them in a in a, in a quick way about what you do and why you're doing it and it needs to be as sort of succinct and uh, effective as possible because you might only have 20 seconds to speak to that person or you might have um maybe um you've created some marketing materials like for example on your linkedin page so you, on your linkedin page you get a little tagline next to your tag next to your name so you need to kind of tell people what you're doing about eight words because that's the bit that they see on linkedin in the in the feed so what I would recommend is if you if you write down, and we're gonna do we're gonna take some time now to do this. Um we'll, we'll sort of have about about five or ten minutes to, to write these um things. We're gonna write a slogan for your business. Try and keep it under five words. It's really difficult, but for example, my my personal one for my LinkedIn page is telling stories about brilliant businesses i think so it's five words so it just it it just sort of gives people a little taste of what i do and then the tagline could be a little bit longer this might be for your website or um, social media graphics etc try and keep that under 15 words so i might say something like helping small businesses to increase customer uh, their client base through effective marketing something like that that's 11 words um and then we're going to have a look at writing a one par pitch or paragraph um in less than 50 words now an elevator pitch this is why we have got the picture of the elevator here an elevator pitch is if you pretend that you're on a lift and you're going from one floor to a higher floor, and you're gonna have say 20 seconds. So pretend you're in the lift with somebody and you've got 20 seconds to tell them about what it is that your business does and why you're doing it. Um, it I would try and keep it less than 250 words and you can tailor this to your audience's needs. So depending on who you're speaking to, so if you're going in for a bid, for example, for funding, you can, you can sort of tell the funder how you're going to help them how you're going to um, help them to achieve their needs as well so just before we set off and do that we, we've got to try and remember that a good, a good pitch will be clear um, and concise it will explain who your customers are so i'm mine i'm talking about businesses about small businesses uh, because they're my customers uh, explain the problem that they're facing so why customers um might not have time to do the marketing or they might not have the skills to do their own marketing um as effectively as they'd like or they might not have the money to pay for 
expensive marketing agencies. Then we need to explain how your product or service addresses the needs of the customer, how you're going to solve that problem for them. And we're going to describe what the success will look like as a result of using your product. So after people uh, have um, done some marketing training with me and after I've helped them to build a website and get the social media platforms off the ground, then they attract more customers, they get more orders, um, they get more messages from customers and the client base increases. That would be my, my example. Um, there is um, a really good article on sales pitches there at HubSpot, which is worth looking at for an in-depth pitch and um, like an in-depth look at pitches. And you'll get the slides after so that you can, that you can grab that. Um, so yeah, we're going to do the activity now. We're not going to do the elevator pitch. I don't think we'll have time, but we're going to do the slogan, the tagline and a one par pitch. Uh, so if we just have five minutes to do that, I'll put this in the text so that you can, uh, in the chat, so that you uh, know what we're up to. So we want a slogan of less than five words, a tagline of less than 15 words, and a one par pitch of less than 50 words so is it okay Shelley if we have 10 minutes to do that or shall we just turn that into a break as well because we're getting up for break time yeah great let's do that so we'll come back at at 10 50 I'll pause the recording now and uh, and we'll come back at 10 51 I think give you time to get a brew and to get going on the on the activity brilliant okay thank you don't worry if you don't have time to finish we'll um we'll have a look at them as we as we come back I shall start I'll just share my screen. Welcome back, everyone. We've just taken a quick break. And Vicky's going to find out how everyone got on with their pitches. So I thought we could share now on this this part of the um, this part of the session. So if you would like to put into the chat, if you've had time, just to put your slogan in at first. So the the sort of less than five words that you could um, put maybe next to your logo or um, on a social media post, something that you can keep repeating. So mine, mine would be um, helping small businesses. No, marketing small businesses in Wigan. So there, that, that would be um, a, a slogan that sort of encapsulates what I do in just five words. And part so you people couldn't tell just from that that I'm a marketing business. My customers are small businesses in Wigan. Uh, you can't get much in five words, but you can you can sort of give people a good idea. Uh, your emotions, your boxing ring. Oh, I like this. That m really makes you want to find out more, Marie, doesn't it, about, about what you do. Brilliant. And Flourishes is supporting change makers through enterprise. Yeah, so you've got your, your, your customer base in there as well. Um, Casey's got trauma-informed resilience building skills. Or use your mind to change your brain. Yeah, good. I like those. They are um, you kind of covering two different angles, aren't you? There's the there's the quite factual slogan about what you do, or there's the there's the more intriguing teaser about what you do. I like that. Good stuff. Has anyone got any more? Any more? Uh, if I. If I can say something uh, about uh, you know the slogan of Kirsty, yes, it's the same. Uh, I mean, the idea of mine is the same. Like your emotions, your boxing ring is like dealing with your emotion is like being in the in a boxing ring kind of thing. Yes, and uh, yeah, so you have to be ready to be in that boxing ring to deal with the emotions effectively. So that's the. 
So when I read Kirsty's uh, uh, slogan, I said, oh, that's what I'm about. <laughs> it's good. You do feel emotionally battered sometimes, don't you? So that's a really <laughs> yeah. good analogy. I like it. I like it. Um, so a tagline, you'll have, have a little bit longer to explain what you do here in a tagline. And this is this is really good to use on LinkedIn um, because they actually ask you on your account to, to put a tagline on there. It's also good for things like cover images on websites or on your, on your social media as well. So has anyone got a tagline? Mine, mine would be... Um, I think it would be working with small businesses to develop marketing skills and boost your client base. That will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen words. I just got in there. You could just go into a little bit more detail here. So I've put I've put in with um, mine. I've got the marketing skills in there. So that's a little nod to the training that I offer, and that solution in there as well to boost your client base. Um, Kirsty's got a, um, a good solution in there as well. So she's put empowering young people, teachers and parents. So that's like a three different client bases and uh, to build resilient skills for life. So that's the solution that you're offering people, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Shelley's put interesting. Some, sometimes you have different slogans for different audiences. So like with the... Um, with Kirsty, who's targeting young people, teachers and parents, then you could have a slogan to target. Because obviously when you're targeting young people, if you want them to engage with you directly, that would be a completely different ball game. Some people create different, even different brand names to target young people or different campaigns. Um, and then teachers, you might offer them a teacher training um, package and then parents, so again, different, different sessions. So yeah, that's true, she Shelley. Thank you. Has anybody else managed to write a tagline for less than fifteen words? And it's really difficult because you need to sort of keep it nice and nice and short, don't you? Right, well, if you think if you if you if you think of one as we're going on, as we're going along, then um, do add it. Now, the what the one part pitch less than fifty words. So this is one paragraph about what you do. Um, this might be a few. So it might be a few sentences. It might be two or three sentences. It's really effective in terms of. Um, gathering sort of funding bids and if you're recruiting for people or um, if you're recruiting for employees or people come on board as directors it's really good to have a one paragraph pitch where you can just encapsulate what you do how you're doing it and why you're doing it and then if you save this somewhere on your computer then you're literally just copying and pasting when when the times needed um did anybody manage to get in a one par pitch in the time i've not given you a lot of time kirsty's got one thanks kirsty Can I say mine or I have to write yeah. it? No, say it, say it, thank you. Okay. Mine is uh, uh, healing poetry, uses poet poetry to help customers who, to move quickly yet efficiently from a traumatic state of mind to a stable emotional well-being. 
It's very good. That's I like that one. That's quite concise, isn't it? Mm. It explains what you do, and it's it, it, who you do it with as mm. well. That's really good. Because the, the the book, the poetry book, will be about the emotions, like roller coaster of emotions, and the podcast will be healing poetry podcast kind of. So the purpose will then be to help customers to move quickly, you know, yet effect effectively or efficiently from a traumatic state of mind to a stable emotional well being. And you and you've got the traumatic in there as well, which is important isn't it Tra traumas and, and trauma informed are quite good words to use because you can sort of imagine what kind of um difficulties people are facing then yeah um mine's mine's on my um on my website i've got well i've got a few sorts of paragraphs on my website and i think i've got a bit over 50 over 50 words here but I, I've put um, our marketing isn't just any old marketing. It's tailor made for you and your business right here by the River Douglas. We offer a range of bespoke services to help spread the word about what you do to Wigan and beyond. Digital marketing training sessions are also a specialty of ours as we strive to pass on our skills so that you can take control of your own branding. So that's that's probably more than 50, 50 words there, but um, I think I've, I've managed to get everything in. If I had to, I'd have to squeeze it down a little bit. Another one that I like using is as a slogan is, um, well, a tagline is let us give your brand the recognition it deserves. Because that kind of, a lot of people have brands, but it's not getting out there. So it kind of appeals to people who want to get their um, the brand more seen. Kirsty, do you want to share yours then? Is it ready? Yeah, I can share mine. I'll have to read it though. Hang on, I've got, I can't see with these glasses on if stuff's too far away. Hang on a minute. So mine is supporting young people, teachers and parents to grow and build resilience skills for life through psychoeducation and trauma-informed practices. Learn how to use your mind to change your brain and develop new neural pathways to support inner strength and mental well-being for life. Great stuff. That's that, that's quite all encapsulating as well, isn't it? And then you've got the you really got the solution in there about building the skills for life as well. Because that that's like that problem and solution-based um uh approach isn't it that is like what we were talking about before so you, you you've ident identified the problem and offered the solution there brilliant stuff good so once has anyone got anything else that they want to share before we move on from that no okay so once once you've got your um oh sorry i just put my tagline in the i don't know what you think about it in the chat yeah all right, thanks, Marie. Encouraging individ individuals to deal with their emotions instead of bottling them. Uh, yeah, that's very good. So you could imagine you can imagine that um, on a graphic, even if you've got your logo up there and you've got your your slogan up there as well, with the boxing ring, and then encouraging individuals. Yeah, it it, it works really well, doesn't it? You can see how you can build it up then. Um, and this is going to feed through. To all your marketing, once you've got you, you you've got a slogan and a tagline, or a few different taglines, maybe for different audiences, and you've got a one-par pitch as well. This is, and then the elevator pitch going forward with your two hundred and fifty words. That might be a post that you put out. Um, this is how you're going to start building like the ethos and the 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 feeling around your brand and the purpose of it. And this is what will get reflected then in your social media. And then you can keep referring back. And it will change and evolve as you go along as well. Your, 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 your message, it will, um, your, your pitch will change because you, you might start off offering one service and then end up expanding or reducing um, or going in a different way and specialising with different people. So it, it will, it is something that changes and evolves definitely. 
Okay, we're going to move on sort of to this. Oh, hang on. We've got another one here from Mossamat. So it's the slogan is be yourself. And the tagline, don't be a people pleaser. Yes, I like that. I think people people pleasing is kind of quite a big problem, isn't it, at the moment? So maybe like be true to yourself or something like that. And may, yeah, and don't be a people pleaser or um maybe something like um think think put yourself first instead of being a people pleaser yeah just kind of be wary, be wary of using the word don't because um it's a negative word so it, it it kind of can have negative connotations so that somebody would tell me um if you tell people don't forget that's kind of insinuating that they are going to forget and you're giving them an order but if you say remember instead it it's more of a positive way of saying don't forget so yeah try and avoid the words don't and um no and things like that but yeah it's good i i, I like it so the, the nitty gritty of social media, which platforms should I use and why? So the, this is a list of the most popular platforms out there at the moment. And that changes um, sort of month by month, really, as we saw in lockdown when TikTok just went massive, didn't it? Um, because people were stuck in and they wanted a bit of light relief. So it does change, but I would try and try and pick four of the main platforms to maintain regularly so i use the top four which um the facebook twitter instagram and linkedin and for businesses linkedin really should be one one platform that you look that you try and um post on because you, you this is uh, facebook for work really linkedin you're going to attract people who want to work with you and collaborate with you People, people, clients, um, but also people who might be suppliers and they might be future employees. Even if you don't post up a lot, if you've just got an account on there and you try and maintain it once a month even, um, I would really try and include Instagram. A lot of people overlook it. Uh, but Facebook's probably the most popular one, the most widely used, I think, with um, in terms of users. Um, so I wouldn't ignore Facebook. Twitter, it depend, I think it kind of depends as well on the audience. And if you if you do a little bit of research into your area, you will you'll find out which are the most popular platforms for your um industry so for example on on pinterest there's a lot of crafty people isn't there and a lot of arty people so if you've got a product which is arts and crafts pinterest is probably one of your an instagram which or graphics based it's they're probably two to really get into um if you're in education there's a lot of education um is big on twitter with uk ed chat uh, and whatnot loads of teachers are on it and you can be quite anonymized as well so I think a lot of police use it and people working like in the NHS who don't necessarily want to have their face out there some people do but um, if they want to anonymize it it's easier to do that on, on Twitter um, it's worth having a YouTube channel if you're producing any videos. Um, I need to really build my YouTube channel, but it's a really good library of videos so that if people want to find out a little bit more about what you do, you can say, oh, take a look at my YouTube channel as well. And if, especially if it's got you speaking on the YouTube channel, people can get to know you a little bit more. It's also good to not just invest in one platform because as we saw, you know, when we get the crashes every now and again where one of the platforms goes down or a range of platforms like Facebook and Instagram are linked and I think it's linked with what's happened to TikTok as well because it's the same parent company. So try and spread yourself out a little bit just in case something happens. You, could, you might get hacked. By the way, I'm just going to put in the chat here <laughs> two-factor authentication you you must um try and get this on your phone 
for all of your um all of your platforms so that you can't just log in with a password and a and a username you need to use a, a device to authenticate it through an app because people are getting hacked like crazy at the moment they're getting locked out of accounts and some sometimes losing their account so please get your two thoughts two factor authentication app on your phone classes that mine's called authenticator and it's the microsoft one and then you just add your Facebook account to it and your Twitter account and your Instagram account. And then you have to go into the settings on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, turn on two-factor authentication, and then you link it to your app. And you'll get, you'll get a code generated every 30 seconds. Then when, so when you log in, you have to, from a new device, you have to enter the, the six-digit code. Um, yeah, that's just an aside, really. Ne Next door is really good for local... Um, Local news, if you're targeting older people, because a lot of older people aren't interested in uh, social media, but they'll do next door because it's all about local news. Uh, it's, quite, it's quite well used here in, in Shevington. So if, you, if you're targeting older people, as, as one of your audiences, I'd recommend next door. Obviously, TikTok's a bit more for the younger generation, but we are seeing more businesses go on there now because they're getting wise to the advertising. Um, and you might want to consider using Snapchat and WhatsApp for, for, for your um, customers. I contact clients through WhatsApp, so I use it in that sense and I've got a business account. I don't use Snapchat because it's just not really my crowd. But if you again, if you're aiming for a younger audience, you might want to contact um clients through that and create content on on snapchat because it's a bit like tiktok now isn't it um and but yeah try and choose at least four to maintain regularly there's nothing to stop you just from opening an account on say tiktok whacking up a couple of videos um and a link to your website or your facebook and then just leaving it because then it, if people do search for you on that platform at least they'll find something on there for social um, media platforms for not-for-profits, there's there's quite a few options and there's a really good article. It's a couple of years old now, but on fat, fatbeehive.com about um, digital platforms which have been created for not-for-profits specifically. They've got a social value. So Care2 um, has got 57 million global members, which is massive. Um, that's kind of a platform to share if you're doing something that, that that's like um, caring for people or get, it's got a social value. If you pop it on there, you get lots of people supporting you and offering things and like prizes and whatnot. So it, it's, a, it's a good platform to explore. I'm not on it myself, but um, it, it, especially if you're dealing with sort of vulnerable people in your area, I would try and get on there and, and make some connections. Uh, next door, yeah, we just talk, spoke about that's the one with the local networking for for your neighbourhood, and it's predominantly used by by older people. That one, Meetup. Um, before COVID, Meetup was a place like a bit like the tweet ups where you would organise, uh, kind of like more like what Eventbrite does now. So, um, creating like getting like minded people to events in your area. Uh, and Eventbrite, again, I've started using Eventbrite. Or there's Tri Booking, which is actually based in Northern England, um, and it's a female founder as well. So um, I'm going to look into Tri Booking because I've heard that it's cheaper than Eventbrite as well. So um, Eventbrite and Tri Booking, for if you're creating events, and that they can be online events as well. Uh, and if you if it's a free event, it is free to put on Eventbrite. If you're charging, it's about a ten percent fee, I think. Um, but that will be emailed to people in your area, so it's a good marketing platform, um, and it's just easy for booking and people just click on the link, pay, but you don't have to deal with all that admin. 
Um, and each platform will offer advice for not-for-profits. So if you just Google whatever pro- whatever platform you, you're using and um, fundraising or not-for-profits, there's pages for that will offer you advice on how to make the best of the platform. And always try and set up a crowdfunding link if it's appropriate for your business. So um, maybe it's a project that you're working on or if you're just... Um, I've got another uh, attendee here. If if you've um, got projects up and running or if you've got a Just Giving page or anything like that or, some, or like just a donation link, try and get you, your link set up um and then as you're posting people can you can just include the link for people to to donate donate um and don't forget google google's really brilliant for businesses even if you don't have a website please do this google for uh, register for google my business then you log into your google business account regularly and it's kind of like its own social media platform in a sense just not as interactive so you'll have your logo up there and all the, all the details about your business an address if you want a postal address which will link to google maps and they verify and everything through the post with you um it will link to your website or your social media and you can put regular posts up there like you would on facebook or Instagram and so it just keeps it nice and fresh so that when people do Google for the services in your area it will help you come up the rankings in the um, in the Google search um, and then you can actually place Google ads on Google so if you've got a Facebook page that you want it to be directed to you can do that or if you wanted to direct it to your website and Google offers free websites now as well so if you want to just have a little taster of a website then get into Google and have a go and um, it's it, it's not going to be a sort of, I don't think you'd be able to have a shop on it and that kind of thing. Uh, it, you won't be able to personalise it as much as you would like a WordPress or a Wix. But it's worth having, even if it's just a landing page before you get you get a bigger website. Um, and use keywords in your content. We're going to talk more on this later, but you've probably just already used quite a lot of keywords by doing your taglines and your your slogans and your pitches that you'll be able to grab out some keywords on there but we are going to look at it so getting going what should you post um a lot of people aren't sure what to post or they've got loads of stuff to post and they don't know what to focus on so try and share what you would chat to your friend about so with your business you, you might think like today for example oh i'm doing a session um today um with, with some ladies from Flourish um, and it's going to be a really good session and it's free and they're going to learn lots about social media. So I've just, that's something that I could share on, on my social media and tagging Flourish. Um, just be careful about sort of oversharing and, and make sure there's a point to your post. So your point might be that you want to get more people to sign on to this course that, you, that you're doing or it might be after an after um, thought. If I've if I post it later this afternoon, I might say, "Oh, thanks to everyone who came today." And there's some more sessions lined up with Flourish. You can book on this link. Um, so make sure that there is a point to it. I always think about breakfast posts. You know, if you if you've had a got a really nice breakfast or dinner somewhere or a cocktail, do you really need to share it on your business page? <laughs> If, if people keep seeing unrele- irrelevant content on coming out of your business page, then there's a danger that they'll follow you, uh, that they'll un- unfollow you. So just m- cr- try and keep it related to the business. It's not to say that it can't be personal at all. You can make it personal, but try and keep it relevant to the business. So I might um, post up something like, Oh, I've, I've like it, it's a two years today since I set up my business. I think I've done really well. I've gone from having no clients in the pandemic to having you know client base of fifty clients, 
and I'm now fully freelance and you know and if you you leave a little call to action if you want to get in touch you need help with your marketing so make sure there's a point to it take take care with all the sharing and too much information because people will get fed up of it um how often is a massive (laughs) it's the thing that that nobody can can tell you you've got to get it right for yourself you, you can have a go at posting out certain amounts of time a week, like three times a week, for example. See how it goes. If your following's getting bigger and you're getting lots of engagement, brilliant. If not, um, maybe try and increase the number of times that you that you're posting. There is no doubt that if you post regularly and often, that your Facebook. Um, and well across all platforms really that your engagement will go up but there is a danger of posting too often so if you're posting something out every single day or three times a day some people it's it's too much it's wasting your time you'll get pushed down the algorithms because it's too heavily related to sort of facebook will see that's free advertising um keep keep it regular but keep track and keep a schedule and dedicate a time of the week to post out and you can schedule so that you don't have to keep logging on um, three or four times a week. You can schedule ahead. Um, you, I've got a really good example for a schedule coming up, which I can send you, which is a spreadsheet. Uh, but you can create a really simple spreadsheet on Google Sheets and just keep a track of each platform and when you're posting up. Um you also, you've got your insights on each platform, which will help you as well. We'll go into that in a bit. For automatic scheduling, I would try Canva Pro because it's brilliant. You can create your, your graphic up there. You can put the word in on the post. You can link it to your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, what and on other platforms as well. And then you just duplicate that post resize it if you have to but if you do it in instagram in an instagram square you probably don't really need to resize it um and and then schedule that to come out in a couple of days um then then you've got one post that's going out across all platforms it might take you half an hour or an hour to to, to do that but then if you can block off a, a morning every week then you can schedule say four posts go out over the next couple of weeks, then you can just sort of forget about it then. Just share the odd bit of news when you've got time. Um, It also is really good for um, scheduling ahead of large large events or busy events where you know you're going to be busy. You can schedule up to a year in advance on Canva Pro, I think, or if not longer. Share lots of positive news. Try and keep it all positive. Um, there are it's really difficult, especially if you're dealing with difficult subjects like like uh, people who've been through trauma and whatnot. But the positive thing would be how you're helping people, how you're getting them through a tough time, um, success stories, good feedback, things like that. Stop procrastinating and overthinking things. If you're a procrastinator or an overthinker and you keep thinking, oh, should I post this or will it offend somebody or will it make me sound a bit, just post it. Just do it. You can learn from it or, it, you know, you'll probably find that you actually get a positive reaction. There's a book called Effing Goods Content and it's on um, it's on Amazon Kindle, I think, so you can download it. It's only about £3. And he's very good at cutting through the bullshit is Dan. He's really good at sort of telling it how it is and um, getting people going. And, and quite, he's quite inspiring, actually, as well. So he will help you to develop your tone of voice when you're marketing. And there's also a book called The One Hour Content Plan by uh, Mira, Co- I think it's Cothand. Um, she's got a really good... Uh, lots of ideas, probably about a hundred ideas of um, uh, how to, what to put in posts and how to engage people. So that's worth having a good read over. It'll give you lots of inspiration. Um, 
so thinking about who your audience is so like we touched on before you might have several different audiences so it might be that you want to reach um your clients but your beneficiary your other beneficiaries and investors it's um you might want to contact the local community you will have different audiences for different posts so just think about who your beneficiaries are and write them down um you, you you've got funders users collaborators supporters people in the wider community and potential users and try and do a little pen portrait of what they might look like how are, old are they where are they from um are they male or female what are their interests what other stuff are they going to be looking at on that platform um that will give your post a bit more purpose and give you an idea of who you who you're talking to in each post so make sure your posts are aiming to speak to one or more of these beneficiaries um it gives your post a purpose and it helps you remember the point so if you're applying for funding for example and you want people to come on board with funding that's a completely different audience to your customers probably um, so you need to, to create a post about how your business helps people and what people's what businesses funding um, will do, what, what the result of the funding will be. Like the old um, problem and solution thing that we looked at before. And this is where you where your um, pitches will, will come into play. Um, stick to the point, whatever the point is of your post. So if you have more than one point to say, so if you're thinking, oh yeah, I want to apply for funding, but while I'm here, I want to, um, I, I, I want to attract funding, but I also want to ask for raffle prizes for a competition that we're running. Take that idea and run with that on a separate post because if it's if you if you're um, aiming your post at two different angles it's going to get lost. It's, it, it, it needs to be more targeted. Um, and then even the Facebook algorithms will pick that up. So if funders like businesses and people who run businesses are looking at your post and liking it and sharing it, then it will show other people who are in that, who fit that, that um, profile. Whereas if you post about... Um, but your post about raffle prizes is getting seen by people who live hyper local and people who are interested in like social enterprises and charities if they're lacking and sharing that post then it, again it will it's more likely to show it to um people with similar profiles um some ideas for cracking content so don't forget we're not procrastinating if you're thinking about it too much stop because you're wasting time just post it please um your your post might have a service or a product focus but don't make it too salesy so if you're trying to um sell something focus on why people should buy it not just posting up a picture of it and saying this is how much it is um if you're very very product led which um i doubt a lot, a lot of you will be, but if you are quite product led, then you will have to have the occasional, you know, new product launch page and what uh, uh, post and whatnot. But what what really good people have seen some good example of marketing products is they'll do is they'll create a little video or a post about how durable something is. Or say, say for example, children's clothing. Um, they'll say where they sourced the pattern from and why they sourced it because people have been asking for this kind of pattern or they'll um, tell you how they made it they'll, they'll tell you how durable it is what um, sizes it comes in um, and how washable it is and how you know you could pass it down onto the next child or sell it back to a repurposing service so rather than just sticking up a picture of the dress with £15 on it people have got a reason to buy it uh, and extra reasons to buy it because they know it's locally made it's durable it, it's washable etc etc um 
put events that you've attended try and get a snap at every event that you attend a self even just a selfie with a couple of people or um of the speakers get sure that you're going out and about and, and talking about your business and that you're working hard to sort of um, market your business relevant news stories watch trend look at what's trending what news is trending at the moment and try and um make that relate to your business because people are interested in that if you've got new staff or you're doing any training um if you've got staff leaving or they're having a special occasion like a wedding or having a baby try and get them on with the with a picture and you know it really shows that you value the people that you're working with them link back to your website content is really important um a really important bridge to make between your website content and your social media content if you have a website and like i said that google one you can get up and running for free if you've got a blog post on there post like the first paragraph or a snippet from you from your blog or a quote from your from your post and say you know to read more go and visit the website and vice versa make sure you've got all your social links on your website so that people reading the website can click through and follow you um on yeah videos again we talked about videos really engaging because you're going to get people looking at your social media profile for longer if they're watching a one minute video or a two minute video rather than scrolling through the post and again if you can keep them um, keep them all on youtube as well it's a really good library to keep and then show people to show prospective clients and podcasts we did touch on this before um if you if you've got an idea for a podcast and you've got you, you might do it on your own you might do it as an interview with somebody um or with more than one person get out there and do it there's some really good courses that i did a wordpress course i can help you um, put one together but it's literally just a case of getting in a quiet room recording um on zoom or on your phone or on a microphone if you've bought a microphone but you don't necessarily need one and then there's a, an app called anchor fm which i'll just put in the chat where you, it's quite a basic editing tool but once you've got that up and running you can add little jingles into it and like uh, intro music and outro music uh, and then Anchor FM will publish that podcast for you and it will give you the tools to publish it on Amazon and um, oh, I'm trying to think of that well, because Spotify, all the Apple Apple podcasts and it will it will help you to get your podcast out there on all the different platforms and it's free as well. Um, so yeah, if you've got a, a variety of media, Podcasts, videos, so, um, social media graphics, a website if possible, then you, you've got a nice range of, of um, media to show people. It will have an effect on your business because you'll be easily findable. People will get to know your branding um, and they'll come back to you and they'll help, they'll do business with you. So um the, another and um, some more suggestions here for content testimonials are brilliant i've got i've used testimonials quite a lot on um put them into canvas so people might leave a review on my google page or my facebook page um or even if they just send you a nice message if they send you a message and it's private you need to ask permission if you can uh, use it as a testimonial but if they've left it in a in a um, a public um, space like Google or Facebook, then you can just copy and paste it onto a graphic, like a branded graphic with your logo on it, and you can use this in your social media posts um, and just say thank you as well to them um, in your posts tag them in say thank you for leaving me such a, a lovely review but if you got it there on a graphic then you can use it anywhere you can use it on your website uh, in a brochure that you've made on a leaflet um, and people uh, have a massive 
uh, sort of trust in testimonials. I think th there's some statistics out there, but it's something like 60% of people have um, used a business or a service directly because of a recommendation or a testimonial. And they're also more likely to give you repeat business. So if their mate has used you and they've left a good review, they're much more likely to get in touch with you, but they're also much in like much more likely to stay using your business because the 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 trust has been built already. You know, we spoke about the speed of trust before. Well, the testimonials are a really quick way of getting somebody to trust your business. And telling stories for you know, ramble, tell them why you started your business, what what you wanted to achieve, share a success story, make it have a beginning and a middle and an end, you know, make it inspiring. Just like when we were kids and <clears throat> we liked bedtime stories, audiences nowadays love a story, especially if it's an emotive story. So if you've got a good example of how you've hurt, helped somebody or what you've achieved, you know, put some feeling into it. People will engage. Questions, ask your followers for some advice or recommendations or a survey of what they want or what they would use. Um, polls are brilliant. You can, you can do them on like SurveyMonkey for free and just post the links on your social media. Um, and keep it positive I keep saying this but try and keep it positive because nobody likes a whinger if, if you've got some really bad news that you need to, to relate to people like if you um if you're ill for example at the moment lots of people staying off with covid so if you have to tell people that and that you're not going to be contacting them for the next week or so then fair enough uh, you, you 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 need to, it's a need to know basis but if you've just had a bad week or um a customer's annoyed you or someone's been rude or something like that i would i would be think very carefully about uh, about posting that up to followers especially if it keeps happening again and again and again because then people are going to think oh i'm just getting negativity from this this account and they'll all follow it um some people post things like you know we we we've going through a lot of messages and it's taking our uh, a lot of time to go through the messages so please be patient with us that that kind of thing's fine because you're not being too negative but when you really want to say is stop whinging at me for not answering your message after two hours then just rein it in a bit <laughs> ask a friend to, to to proofread it if you want beforehand so we we talked about the standout post before so um you, May, with the branding side of things we talked about them uh, uh, and we also have a little bit of extra information here so if um, you, you're spending time on this standout post there's an example here that I did recently with the Ukrainian phone appeal so I wanted to make sure that I spent a little bit of time on it and put lots of content on there and lots of information so I made sure that it had my logo and branding on there and that's on my graphic and it's got other people's logos on there as well because it's a collaborative effort um it's got a headline or an impact statement on it so it's the first line of my post is do you have a pre-love mobile that could help a ukrainian refugee so it's sure it, it's succinct and on a mobile that will come up on the first two lines that you see in a, in a preview on a mobile again when we were talking about like slogans and taglines you're limited on your first line to about 10 words before people have to click to read more. And the getting people to click and read more is difficult. So if they've got a really good top line, really good first line, then they're more likely to click on it to read more. Um, it's got contact details on there or a call to action of what, what you want them to do. So what I want them to do is donate their phones to those drop-off points. Uh, I've also put please inbox us if you'd like any more info. Um, it's got some hashtags on there, not many. I probably could have used more. And again, there's arguments against for and against using too many hashtags, but a lot of social media managers just say whack them on up to 30 because it, it doesn't do any harm. People don't tend to read them. It's 
if you put them at the end of the post, people aren't going to read through all your hashtags. But what, what is going to happen is when people search for those keywords on the on the forum, uh, <clears throat> on the platform, then your your um, post is more likely to come up. And people do click sometimes on hashtags just because they've seen one post and they think, oh, yeah, I'm interested in phones for Ukraine. I wonder what else they've done. And they click on the hashtag. Not very often, but it does happen. Um, the call to action, yeah, we've gone through that. You want, that's what you want people to do, how you want them to act. And make, try and make sure that you stand out post. If not, every post really has got a call to action. Get, get people to, to do something. And 100 words plus, if you can, on your standout post, even 200. People, some people have write reams and reams, and on Facebook and um, Instagram, you could do that, but you can't do that on Twitter. You've got to be much more succinct. Just be aware that people probably won't read more than about 200 words because they're on social media. They, they don't want to read a book. But you, there's nothing to stop you from directing them to your blog that's on your website if they do if they do want to read more. Uh, emojis, I haven't got any emojis on this one actually, but they're really useful for breaking up text to put on your headline to attract um, the eye and make, just make it a little look a little bit more interesting, basically, um, especially on Facebook and Instagram. And to, to really get some maximum reach on, on social media, um, I've just looked a little bit at advertising here. So it's a minefield uh, advertising on Facebook. You never know how your advert's going to go. So if, but if you've got a standout post like this um, and you've got a really good graphic, it, the graphic's important because that's what people will see on the advert when it runs. I would recommend Facebook allows you to run sort of simultaneous ads. So I'd run a campaign of four ads at the same time see which one gets to the most interaction. Now, they might be about completely different topics or they might be about the same thing, but worded slightly differently. And um, you can set the audience type to, to area, gender, interest. You can even put on things like what programs they watch or you know what, what, what pubs they go to or what football club they support. So have a think about your, when we talked about the sort of pen portrait of your ideal or audience member, think about that. What, how old are they? What do they like? Where do they live? What other places are they um, engaging with? What other pages? And you can add this to the ad settings. Then I would run the, the four adverts simultaneously, maybe for a week. And you can, your budget's up to you. You can spend, I think, £3 a day or you know, three million pound a day. It's literally, it's up to you. And then go back and check what which of the adverts is doing the best. Um, think about why it's doing the best because there's something obviously in there which is connecting with people. Um, and then consider dropping the the other, the worst one or two or three even and put in a little bit more money on the one that's running the best. And that will feed into advert, your advert audience in future as well. But sometimes you need to appeal to a different audience. So, um, for example, if you run a mother and baby group, but you want to um, target dads for a dad's um, event, then your audience is going to change. So you're going to have to adapt a little bit your ad and your pitch. So whereas... You might be quite gentle or um, chatty with the, the mums in, in your pitch. You might want to be a bit more jokey and blokey with, your, with, the, with the, the men's one. I don't know. Or mention football or, or beer or something that blokes are into. Just, just kind of um, consider the changing the tone for your different audience. Review, review what you've spent and its effectiveness. If you're not getting any, any decent engagement from this, then it's a, it's a waste of money. Don't keep plowing your money into it. 
just do your port your free posts um you can ha ask me for advice if you think that, that there's something not working right um it might be something like spelling and grammar so i wouldn't be too worried about spelling and grammar but it does need to be readable so if you're struggling a little bit i use grammarly i'll put i'll put that in the chat um grammarly is a free service where you just copy and paste your text in, into grammarly and it will do a really good spell check on there where we'll have a break in a minute i think as well shelly um it will it will it's like a spell check but on speed it's really good it it suggests better words but than the, than the boring ones that you've used it tells you when there's a comma in the wrong place um and it flags up any errors in red so that you can change them really easily and it's not always 100 percent correct but it's a really useful free tool to have and then you just correct it in grammarly copy and paste it back into, into where you were going to paste it um, and you've saved yourself a couple of errors. Um, so, yeah, if you're really not having much luck on your adverts, then consider Google Ads because it, that I find that's really effective at the moment, Google. Um, I have got a web page, but it, Google will direct to, to social media pages as well if that's where you want your target, you, you target to go. You, like I said, the free Google web pages are available as well. Um, I just find that Google's a bit, a bit more effective for, for money at the moment. A lot of social media managers are struggling with adverts on social media. So unless you're really dead set on spending a lot of money on socials, have a look in it at Google Ads. Uh, and then I'll just do this slide and then I think we'll have a break. Um, free stuff that you can do for maximum so use on so uh, maximum reach on social media is to create a group, but I haven't done this yet and I keep meaning to do it for kind of like clients and people who engage with you. Creating a group is a really good way of them seeing your post more often because if they're in a group, Facebook thinks, oh, you know they're really interested in this subject so i'll show them the post more often than the page invite your interested parties ask other people to invite their friends as well um and get personal on your business pages as well I've touched on this a little bit but people need to see your face and they need to know who you are and sharing from your business page to your per personal page is a really good way of doing this because you might be friends with somebody who you don't really engage with much but that when they know about your business and they know what you do you might be exactly what they need or what their friend needs so if you shared it on your personal page that might be the only way that they would ever find out about you um and vice versa you could share um from your you can get personal on your business page so you can say you know i'm a working mum with two kids and it, it's um it's been a dream of mine to set up this business and get your face on there do some videos as well if possible try and keep it to 80 20 so on your personal page it would be like 80 percent of your personal stuff but 20 percent of your of your business stuff and on your business page vice versa 80 percent business but 20 percent put more personal stuff some people do a lot more personal stuff because the emotive stuff is really grabbing people at the moment Collaborate with people. So on that post that I've done, I got the um, local businesses to collect pre-love mobile phones. So I've tagged in the local businesses because then they will share that post um, on their uh, pages. And then obviously you've just like quadrupled or more your audience. You've got you've got um, all their followers sort of engaging with your post then as well. That and that's free. So. Flourish is a great one, isn't it? Shelly, um, Flourish is a brilliant account tag so that um, they will always try and re retweet and repost for you or comment. Uh, I've, I've also got a social media um, awareness group sort of uh, on WhatsApp. So if you're interested, you can send me your number. I'll just type my number in here now um i i will add you to the social media awareness whatsapp group and it's basically sort of 
a list of my it's just my clients um in the local area in Grace, Manchester and Wigan. And every time we post something, we post a link. We don't have chats in there. We just post a link to what we've posted up. And we ask people to like, comment and share. Or, if, you know, even if they just like it, if they've not got time to do the comment, it's a really good way of just getting sort of people in your area to, to engage and uh, to hopefully share with their followers as well. Um, test the frequency of your posts, like we discussed before. If you're posting up every day and it's not working, try and post a bit less. If you're only posting up once a fortnight, then you're probably not going to be getting much engagement. I would try and increase it, but to see what works best and try and stick to that frequency. And use the insights on the platform. In, insights will tell you everything about how many people, uh, new people followed you, what your most popular posts were. And um, it, you can use it to see what's working on your site and may, on, on your platform and maybe what isn't. It's not, it's not an exact science because sometimes the most surprising posts do really, really well. And you think, well, I don't know why that's worked. But if it does work, then you can repeat it, can you, in the future? Um, OK, has anyone got any questions? We're going to go into a break now. Um, for uh, so, uh, 10 minutes, then we'll come back in at 12 o'clock. Um, if that's okay, so we've just got time to make a brew, grab a sandwich. Has anyone got any questions before we go? Looks like you've been very thorough, Vicky. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you've got any questions um, in the meantime, we can come back to that uh, after the break. So yeah, 10 minutes and we'll come back at 12. Um, and we'll see you then. And welcome back for part three of this session. Vicky, over to you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to start the session by sort of asking if anybody's got any burning questions or, or worries or anything about um, the social media, because what I'll do is I'll try and answer them then before the end of the session. Um, I'm just trying to. Am I, am I sharing my screen now, Shelley, or not? No, no. no. Right, and that's good because I want to look at the chat. <laughs> I've lost the chat. Oh, where's it gone? Bits on Zoom vanish sometimes. It's deeply frustrating. Oh, here, yeah, that it's because I've minimised the screen. I've got it. I've got it. So, has anybody got anything that they're not not sure about, or anything that we've that we've mentioned that they'd like a little bit more cl clarification on? Oh, what's, I've just noticed this post, um, this message from Kirsty, who created a Facebook group in lockdown, doing live mindfulness videos, and got much more engagement than my Facebook page did. I got 200 people quite quickly. Val, wow, that's brilliant, Kirsty. Yeah, that, that's relevant content. Um, yeah, like we said, you, you, those people in that group then are much more likely to see to see the posts within the group rather than if they were just followers of your page. Yeah, it's a good... And if you can offer something like that, like... Um, the, if you can give somebody something like a free video or a free session, then again, they're much likely to engage with you. I've just signed up for a, a gym subscription. It's a whole, it's a home kind of PT thing that um, that is a month's free sessions online. But after that, it's like thirty pound a month. But you can do all sorts of sessions with yoga and Les Mills and all sorts of things. Um, but because somebody's giving you something first, because they got that free month, I'm more likely to stay on and pay the subscription because I feel like I kind of owe them something a bit back and I want to support the business. So, yeah, that's a really good way of doing it. Right. Okay. We haven't got any questions yet, but if you if you if you think of anything that you that you that you need to ask, just um, just holler or pop it in the chat. Um. So where were we up to? So we were, uh, yeah, with the social media planner, I will send you this um, 
This is called a uh, dot digital planner. Um, and it's basically a spreadsheet of what you post in. Um, it's quite detailed, this one. There's the, they've, put, they've got a space for the actual post so that you post the copy up. You've got a link or a call to action on there. Um, what campaign is it part of? Like, um, so you might be putting a new product out or a new service. Um, if you not everything that you post will be part of a campaign, but it will be part of kind of a theme, I call it. So it might be um, training that I offer, or it might be um, Christmas or something like that, Christmas cards and whatnot. Um, so the graphic, they've even included a link to a graphic. This is really good because if you want to post something similar up in a few weeks' time, you've got it there. You just have to go click on your link to your graphic, which could be on, on um, the cloud somewhere. The engage, and then they've got the engagement. I'd be tempted to add an extra column that I call the audience, like who is it in? But the engagement will be how many people have um, liked or, or shared perhaps or how many how many people have seen the post because just because you've not got lots of likes and shares it doesn't mean that a lot of people haven't seen your video or your or your post and you, and facebook or uh, will tell you how many people have actually seen it too um so we've talked about chunking up time and scheduling a heading i would recommend canva uh, the pro version but there are lots of other tools that we're going to look at now and you'll never miss an important or predictable event. So if you know that something's coming up, like a new product launch or your Christmas posts, or um, it might be at your anniversary um, or an event that you're going to, you, you, you can plan this in advance and get your posts ready to go out. Um, you can cross post on different platforms. And now Facebook and Insta are really linking together and TikTok too so that you can post it once on Instagram and it will ask you if you want to post on Facebook and TikTok as well. And I think if you schedule ahead on Canva, it goes automatically from your Insta to your Facebook page if you've set up the business um, Insta and Facebook pages, which, you, which I would really recommend that you do. Um, you, your Instagram page is just a personal page, but then you can turn that into a uh, business page. Um, yeah, so you, you're going to eliminate the need to keep posting every day, but don't schedule anything like brand new news or kind of, you know, comment on, on what's going on that day. Just keep that in the moment. Uh, and just be aware of dated content. So if you've, got, if you've got a product launch coming and you've scheduled all your posts and then something happens, you, like you get COVID and you can't do it anymore, make sure you go back and, even if you will, try and... Um, Get postpone the posts or just um, turn off the schedule so that they don't get scheduled out. So the, here's some different scheduling tools available. My, my top one's Canva, like I've said. It's the, I think it's the best value one, even if you have to pay for it, um, because it just does so much. It gives you so many options, and there's loads of free training and free um, tutorials available on YouTube as well. Later is another one that people use quite a lot, and that's quite... Um, quick to use it's more expensive though because you pay per channel um it's free for one channel so if you just wanted to use it say for your twitter um it's it's free um up to 30 posts a month uh, i think that that might have changed since i um, lasted this slide but just check check really carefully uh if you if you i'll, I'll go through content in light a minute uh, content schedule in light but if you do use facebook you can schedule ahead for free and link that to your instagram account so if you if you're focusing on those two platforms um that's a, a really good way of, of saving time um there was quite a few more here sprout social uh hoot hoot sweet's quite a popular one I'd, I never could get along with it just because I thought it was a bit complex. Uh, but a lot of people do recommend Hootsuite for managing. It's kind of like the interface is all in one place. I've got a, a cat visitor here, by the way, so you might see a cat popping up in a minute. Um, but have a look, see which one you think is the best for you. But please do check out Canva as, you, as your first port of call. Uh, this is how we schedule on Canva Pro. You could you, there is a three buttons in the corner of every post that you create of every graphic, um, 
and then it asks you to where to where to share where to to publish to your Facebook page, for example, Twitter, and you can link your Instagram business, LinkedIn, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you will you can select um, which pages on your video you want to post, or do you want to post it all as a video? Or you can post it as a PNG graphic instead, a static graphic. Then you write the content in there, or you could copy and paste it from your schedule sheet. Um, don't forget to check in, in Grammarly first. And then the, con the content calendar button is down there, and it's, it's a bit ambiguous. It just looks like a little square, but it's supposed to be a calendar icon. And if you, instead of publishing now, if you click on the calendar icon, it will let you pick a date and time um, for scheduling out. And then it will appear on your content calendar like this. So it gives you a nice brief overview. If you look at the beginning of the month, what you've got scheduled for July and you think, oh, I've got nothing scheduled on um, Instagram for that week. And then you know where your, where your gaps are. So even if you don't use a spreadsheet, you can you can just use the content calendar on there. But for scheduling light, so this is for not pay not paying. This is the free version. Um, if you download the Business Suite app on your phone to access your, your page, that's that's what Facebook wants us to do now. Um, use the Business Suite to schedule posts for free, and you can schedule. Um, I think I don't think there's a, a number limit. I've never reached it anywhere. Um, and it will link your Instagram account. You can also use it to do the stories, which Canva Pro can't do um, because stories are supposed to be sort of in the moment and Instagram's a bit funny about scheduling. But you can um, do it through Facebook if you create a story on, at, on um, Facebook and post it to Instagram as well. You can create, so for example, four weeks worth of one of content in one morning, just ha have your, your time boxed off like that. And yeah, we'd, as we'd said about posting up in between with uh, the sort of the, the more, well, uh, more in the moment news. And there's a Facebook calendar in Business Suite to keep track of what you posted so that you can see again at a glance what's going out. Um, there's some, some top tips for Twitter there. Twitter is quite a lot more chatty and it's really good for getting engagement and, and having conversations on there. So um, set a LinkedIn, I would recommend setting up a personal page for you, for your career and, and your, you know, this will last you your Facebook, your LinkedIn page for life. It's like a CV online. But then also set up a business page for your brand um, and cross post between your personal and your and your business. Um, and again, be more be a bit personal on there and get get to know people. It's very good for local networking as well, LinkedIn. And there's lots of networking events out there. And I, I run one called Proper Good Networking as well, if you ever fancy attending. We do Zooms and live events. Flourish has loads of networking events going on which are brilliant for making new contacts in, in um, your area. So we're going to look at keywords and hashtags now because but lots of people um, recommend, social media managers recommend using lots of hashtags, like like I said, about 30 hashtags per post. And that's, that's for these sort of standout posts. But a lot of people aren't sure what to what to use as a hashtag and the co a common mistake that people make is making up their own hashtags so you might put one as your brand name like mine's hashtag belting wigan and i know that nobody else is really going to be using that but if they do click on belting wigan then they'll they'll find my post um but other than that i wouldn't make any up you know even if you think it's funny it's <laughs> it's just a waste of time because nobody's going to be searching for that phrase like for example oh what a brilliant morning or something like that. You know, people aren't going to be put searching on um, platforms for that. So your brand name works well. Um, so this is an example that I did. It was for the butchers in Wigan, in Appley Bridge. So your keywords are going to be butchers, Wigan, Appley Bridge, Sherrington, Rice and Meat, food deliveries, uh, pork, beef, burgers, all the, all the things that people will search for. Butchers in Wigan is really important because um, Google says that 60% 60, 60 I think it is of searches online 
or whatever the service is or the product plus in my local area or in in, in Wigan in Lancashire in Manchester so um make sure that you're getting that, that across in your in your posts about your local area if it's relevant to your business which it probably is uh buy hashtag buy local as well remember you can't have the um you can't have the um spaces in your hashtags so you'd have to be closing up the word so it was hashtag buy local with no no space this cat is really being naughty come on um so write write a list of your hashtags somewhere just keep it on your computer or your phone in another place to look if you're not sure is to, to look at what your competitors are using those keywords because if they're using them the, the likelihood is that people are searching for them as well and you can find out how, exactly how many people are searching for these on um search engines if you use a website called neil patel N neil patel is like the guru of a search engine optimization he He's been marketing businesses for years and he's sort of multi-millionaire uh, guru. So he offers a lot of free content and advice as well. So if you go on to Neil Patel, he will let you search for a website to see to see what um what keywords they're ranking for basically on search, on the search engines. So if you just start on Google by, um, like I would type in marketing in Wigan or marketing services in Wigan, see which is the top ranking competitor. It might be you, in which case that's brilliant, but who's the next one down on the search list? Copy the um, web address into Neil Patel and he will tell you what keyword which keywords they're ranking for and which are the most effective keywords so i used it with the our butchers example i put bu butchers in wigan oh no i put butchers in appley bridge so this is what came up um butchers fair was the top keyword it was searched not 590 times um and the the um, website the competitor website which was butchers fair what that that I used as an example as a competitor, um, they came number one for Butcher's Fair, which is obvious they would do. It's their brand name and it's going to be all over their website. But the next one down um, was another rival brand, Kings Wigan, Kings Butcher's Wigan. But so Butcher's Wigan, we've got Cheese Block. I thought that was quite a surprising one because. We, 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 obvious ones are Wigan Butchers and the brand name, but Cheese Block, Sandwich Steaks, Frozen and Frozen Steak Sandwiches. And, the, and Cheese Block got in 1,600 searches. So there's a Butchers in Wigan that is um, getting 1,600 search results from the Cheese Block services, which I thought was really interesting. So then what you would try and do is use that hashtag in your social media posts as one of your 30 hashtags and you could use it in your website content as well if you obviously i presume they offer a cheese block so get your cheese posts on there and your hashtag cheese block and you're going to do really well um when you've um got your list of of keywords and hashtags make sure you're not using um spaces and punctuation in there you can use capital letters if you want to and it, it helps to split up words there is a danger of making rude words up as well if you have no spaces um if you google susan boyle hashtag you'll you'll find a, an example of how that backfired um and we um just make make sure you don't make up your own because no one's going to be using them and try and stick to the same ones each um, each time. And again, your list will evolve because you'll change and, and adapt your business as you're going along. Try and use these words in your copy. So in your posts, when you're writing your posts, try and use those keywords like Wigan Butchers. Are you looking for a Wigan, butch uh, uh, Wigan Butchers? Are you looking for a Butchers in Wigan? Uh, things like that. And then people who are searching for that um, we'll find your posts 
And then there's a really good cheat here. So if you are, are sick of typing out 30 hashtags and think that's going to take me ages, then there is a, a text replacement um, accessibility hack. So if you um, go onto your phone, and, uh, this is for Apple, but there is an Android version. If you find in the settings for your phone the text replacement um, option, you type in all, all of the hashtags and then you can type in a shortcut for those hashtags. So my shortcut I've put is hashtag BLT, which is short for belting. So when I type that in my phone now, all of my hashtags come up with my, um, I think I've got like 15 on my list. I should put some more in really. But that will save you typing it out all the time. And if you're using Apple as well, I, um, that will appear on your computer as well if you've set that into your phone and vice versa. Uh, oh, I've just seen Kirsty's question. Are there any guidelines on replying to comments on your post? Just thinking if you do get high engagement, it could be real time consuming. Yeah, it is. Definitely, definitely try and reply to the comments on your post. If you're finding it's too time consuming, just like them. Um, but if someone's got a question or a query, then do try and answer it. And obviously, it's it, it is going to take long a long time. So it could be a quick answer, like just thanks. Or you can do well, that hashtag that replacement text replacement that I've just spoken about. You can do stock replies on that. So you could put oh thanks very much. That's very kind of you. But then put hashtag ta. So or hashtag um fab or something like that and then you just type it in those three words and this sentence will come up and then you click you click it on your form and you can do that with anything you could do it with website addresses uh, phone numbers so that you're not constantly adding your phone number every time you need to type it but yeah you do get lots of engagement if you if you reply to messages and people are more likely to, to comment again in the future um, we talked about uh, this, uh, we talked about uh, letting your business sell itself um, using testimonials. And this is this is kind of what Kirsty's just asked about, creating conversations. So if you are just posting stuff out and then never visiting your, your fit page again during the week, you're going to lose the opportunity to create conversations. So try and get on there and reply and and comment as your page on other businesses or other uh, local issues the local groups are brilliant for joining um community groups and i know they can get a bit uh, angsty sometimes so just try and keep it polite and um positive but if someone's got a problem like say somebody's asking for or does anybody know um somebody who can help me with a new website for example and then you'll get people recommending websites and then I could go on as my business and say hi I'm based in the village if you want me to come and have a cup of tea with me at the cafe next week one time or you know sometime let me know and we'll have a chat and or you can hash post as yourself and just link your business in there as well I've just got to get a plug because my <laughs> my power's going low on there but yeah, building the community around your pages is the is how you're going to get that ongoing engagement from people, um, and that and that's what builds the audience basically for your, for your website and it keeps people coming back time and time again. Left my plug upstairs. Uh, and ask people to help as well. Ask your contacts to help. So. If you've got friends who run businesses or your friends who, who just want to support you and you've got um, a post that you want them to share or like, just be a bit cheeky about it and ask. Um, they won't mind. Send them a, a message on Facebook just to say, oh, do you mind sharing this? I've just got new products out or, you know, a new service. Can you just share it and they will they will they don't mind um that's why i set up like my little local networking group because there's a group of about 10 of us who attend events every now and again and um i'll just ask them send them a message to help oh i'm out of breath now after running upstairs 
Um, so yes, that's how you, you know, this Flourish group is a great opportunity to, to do this and support each other's um, businesses by liking and sharing. Every time you comment, you're helping someone's business, so, so do it. Um, telling a story, yeah. So we talked a little bit about before, about this is how you grow in your community by telling stories. So there's a really good example from a, a view from within who's a gardener called Darren, and he, he's a brilliant gardener at what he does, but he's marketing, he's just dead basic, and it works. He He's... Um, created a garden here and he's he always posts up like um the the finished picture after and he's sold it as a bit of a story by saying this was a garden that I built in the depths of wind so uh, it never stopped raining so he he was having it he's obviously put lots of effort in it was a it was a hard job so it was really nice to go back and add lots of lovely plants to bring the garden to life. I'm really delighted how this turned out. So he's proud of his work. He's, really, he's a good workman. And I hope you guys like it. And then he's just put Darren and his phone number on there. So that's an instant way of getting um, people just send you a quick text or a WhatsApp to, to, to make an inquiry, isn't it? Um, so the, the photos speak for themselves. And again, you know, he's not put, he's not been too salesy. He's not just posted a picture and said a new patio two grand or whatever it costs you know probably more but he's he sold it as um a little story and he's had lots of engagement as well 204 likes um this was um somebody who came to one of my sessions i had a look at her uh, facebook page before and you you can like other pages as your page it's some Facebook's changed the way recently that you can do this. But if you're finding it difficult, if you go to a desktop, you can click on the three dots on somebody's page and like as your page. And then it brings you the list of your pages if you've got more than one page that you can like it as. Um, and then you will be following that page then as your business page and they're more likely to follow you back as well. So yeah, just be sociable on social media. It's um, it's easy to get lost in the stream of content that you're putting out, but try and talk to people. You, you do use your likes, comments and shares. Um, get your hashtags up and your call to actions. Competitions are a great way of doing some instant engagement, especially for a new page. Someone that I know is a mortgage advisor in Wigan and she posts up a Friday giveaway every Friday or most Fridays. And she gives away a £30 voucher for Just... No, Wigan Eats. So it's... Wigan Eats is like the Just Eats of Wigan where you order on an app and it's all Wigan-based food suppliers. Takeaways. So she gives away a 30 quid voucher. She puts it up every Friday morning and says, I'll, we'll draw it at 6pm tonight. You could win a takeaway. And it gets loads of engagement. It gets like 50 people entering every time. And you have to, um, I think you have to like the page. So that's got them liking the page. Then They're unlikely to unlike it in future. Um, I think she asked you to tag somebody who you'd share the takeaway with. So people are tagging their mates and uh, partners and whatnot. And she's spending money on a local business. She's all about local because um, her client base is local. And it's like rather than spend 30 quid on our Facebook ad, which might or might not do good, she's um, getting sort of guaranteed interest in the page uh, week on week. So just make sure that you can follow through with the prize. That's the only word of warning I would give. Put, maybe put a few T and C's on the end of it, like um, how are you going to get the prize to them, the deadline for entering and uh, how many prizes you're giving away and that kind of thing. But generally people don't get too caught up on, on the rules, but just make sure you cover your back by saying, you know, you must spend this in X amount of time or um, collect from the shop or um, send us your email address even for, for a collection. 
Um, and stay positive again. I keep saying that, but please do. <laughs> so yeah, there's a good example. Those are my examples of testimonials, like we we said through before. Yeah, it's just so referred customers have a 16% higher lifetime value with 30% higher conversion rate than customers acquired from other channels. And please ask people to, for reviews as well. Ask them to leave your Google review. As soon as you get positive feedback from somebody, just say, oh, that's brilliant. I'm really glad you liked working with me. Do you mind leaving me a Google review or do you mind leaving me a, um, a Facebook review? I'm just trying to, you know, build up my reviews. I've even asked my people to leave reviews for my clients before and they've done it, you know, because um, I've recommended my client. I think one's a plumber. Um, someone was looking for a plumber, so I recommended my client. He went and did the job and the, the client texted back and said, oh, thanks for recommending um, Steve, he's called. You've uh, you came and did the job really quickly. Explain what was wrong. Blah, blah, blah. It was a really good service. So I just said, "Oh, that's brilliant." Do you mind leaving him a Yell review because he's got a Yelp.com page and he's not had a review for a bit. So she went on and left him a really good Yelp Yell review. And like, if I he's he's obviously not asked her to do it, I'll tell him off. But if because I have asked her to do it, um, and she was happy with the job she's gone and done it and that that reviews there now for for all his customers to see um so just so to so finish off with we we're coming towards the end of the the session now so i just thought it would be um useful for some people who are thinking of setting up a website or who already have a website to look through search, search engine optimization it, it also kind of has an effect on your um, social channels as well. So even if you're not thinking of, of setting up um, a website anytime soon, you could consider some of this in your posts as well uh, on social media to track because this is how people find your social media sometimes if they use Google or Bing to or other search engines to, to try and find your uh, to try and find similar suppliers. So basically, um, for SEO, your content is king. So whatever you're posting in text, pictures, videos, this must be relevant and include top keywords. So um, your you, you copy in particular. You, you do your, key, so your keyword research because it is really important for SEO. It's... Um, Google's getting better and better and better at working out what is relevant and what isn't relevant. Um, so I'm sure even if you if you just create from the heart, you'll you'll be including keywords naturally. Um, but it, you can get a bit carried away sometimes in writing, and then when you look back at it, you realise you haven't actually used your relevant keywords like marketing. Mine would be or marketing in Wigan or social media marketing or marketing training things like that so it's worth being really aware of your keywords and doing your keyword research um when you've got your keywords and when i say keywords that could be a key phrase like uh, marketing in wigan place those keywords in um the text about four or five times throughout the article if it's about 300 words um, more if it's a longer article. Try and put them in the headings, um, particularly H1, 2 and 3 size headings. That's the biggest three headings that you can get on a web page. Um, try and put them in your URL, in your page addresses. So if you're creating a post, a blog post, and it's um, how to um, create a design on Canva, then you could include um, designing Canva as your keyword and put that in the URL and the heading and the text. Also include it as alt text on your images. So alt text is alternative to a picture. So if you're using a screen reader, if you've got visual impairment, um, your the 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 screen reader will read everything on the screen as text out loud to the user. 
And then when it comes to a picture, it will read out the alt text. So the alt text ideally needs to be what's on the picture. Um, so if your keyword is um, creating in Canva, whatever I said about the Canva, make sure that you use that in your alt text as well so that the image is relevant and, you, and it's in your alt text because it's an accessibility issue when the Google um, wants every page to be as accessible as possible to its users, which is fully understandable. And we need to strive to be a bit more accessible as well, a lot more accessible. You can get an an accessibility plugin as well for if you've got Google, um, if you've got WordPress, which is worth putting on so that people can enlarge the text and whatnot. Um, try and put 300 words plus on, on your website pages because Google uh, considers that to be a healthy amount of text. It's not too much. It's not too little. You're going to be getting lots of relevant information in there. Um, and split that up with the headings so that it's sort of paragraph or two paragraphs and a heading, a bit more than a heading. It, Google knows that that is then um, nicely presented and, and broken up for the reader. Um, make sure you've got a variety of media on there. So pics, videos, podcasts, you can link through to a YouTube channel or you can host a video on your own site if you want more of it. Links to podcasts. Um, the, the more of a range of media that you get on your website, the better, because again, Google looks at it and it thinks, oh yeah, this is going to be a good site because she's got lots of different, um, different range of media on there to keep people interested in your website. Register with Google My Business. We mentioned that before as well. Super, super important for anybody, even if you've not got a website, please register with Google My Business or else you're just not going to be ranking it, it, um, in Google searches. Consider Google ads as well, and they do give you offers. I think at the moment, if you spend £400 on Google advertising, they'll give you £400 for free, and that's a lot of money, but I think you can stretch it out over quite a few months. Uh, and it's a good a good way of, especially if you've got a website launch, for example, of just having a, a, a boost on your, on your website. Um... Then this, the next slide is about sort of um, links, really. So link your website by copying and pasting the URL and posting that to your social media and vice versa so that you've got your, um, your social media buttons on your website. Um, Social media is trustworthy to Google. So if, if your brand is on social media and lots of people are visiting it on social media, that means that you're a legit, reliable business in, Google, in Google's eyes. So it will direct traffic um, to your socials and it will help you move up the algorithm, up the, um, up the Google search as well if you've got a strong social following. Backlinks. So backlinks are links to other websites, basically, that are relevant to your content. I'm just going to close my bedroom window because the bin lorry is going past now. <laughs> so if you, for, for my website, my backlinks would be to client websites. Um, I've got a few clients on the uh, we've done websites for or social media work for and I've just asked them is it okay if I put your logo on my um, website and a link to your website or your Facebook page and they always say yeah because they want more visitors um, but what, what happens with Google is that if it sees that you've got two or three links, outbound links on your page, on your um, website then again it's kind of um, reiterating that you are a legitimate website because you've got, you're sending people to find relevant information on the website elsewhere. Um, and links in between your other pages as well, so that you're linking people from one page to another to another on your website as well. That's really important. 
Don't ignore Bing because 10% of searches are made by Bing users. Uh, there are different uh, priorities on Google and Bing. They're basically the same, but Bing is massive on keywords and tags and things like that, which are just, um, it's just information that you add to your website in the, in the back office. Um, and backlinks are more trusted by Bing. Bing loves multimedia, but Google relies more on text. So you've got to kind of cover all bases, really. Um, then the lists, email lists, if you can, please um, gather people's email addresses. But if you are doing so, you must consider the GPR and they should opt in to emails as well. So on your website, you need a clickable box for them to opt in. Um, offer when you're emailing out a, a newsletter or just a simple email, always offer an opt out unsubscribe option and take them off if they unsubscribe. They'll just delete them from your records. It's not worth uh, spamming people at <laughs> so all. Keep your database up to date, only send out relevant emails, um, and you can create really good newsletters on, on um, Canva as well with clickable links through to your website. Ma MailChimp's a good um, option to create newsletters on as well. It's really simple to use and it gives you some good insights into who's opened it, who's opened your emails and bounce backs and whatnot. Um, and then the last thing that I just, I've got two minutes to whiz through this because uh, I thought, we, could we finish a bit early, Shelley, seeing as we haven't had a, a third break, if that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. Good, good, good. Um, the, it's just about de dealing with negative feedback, the final thing, really. Um, so because you, you you probably will at some point become come across negative feedback in um, one way or another. So it might be people having a little bit of a whinge about your services or your prices or it could be anything. So just just be prepared that that you might get negative feedback, but um, don't ignore it. Um, I would say never post angry. So you can reply to people, but don't do it in, a, in an angry way um, because then that, that reflects badly on on your sort of ability to, to you know control yourself as a business so oh I would always start with empathizing so if somebody's left you a bit of a negative review or they've not been happy then just address the issue say I know how you feel you know sometimes I would say oh if that happens to me I'd be really annoyed as well or um you know I've, I've been in the same situation as, as you and I know it's a pain Try, try and deal with it privately and get them onto a messenger say, uh, or a, a text. Say, Do you mind giving us a call or a text until we can talk it through? But if you have to, you, you need to stick up for your business. So if, if they have um, slated you and you think it's an unfair comment or a bad, an unfair review, there's loads of examples now. Businesses are biting back. Some people are suing people who leave them bad review. So if you feel you've been rated unfairly, reply and explain what happened. There's a good example of a pub who overbooked at Christmas and the Christmas service was really bad. So the pub went on and said, you know, it, we, we really tried our best. It wasn't our fault. We had uh, like 10 staff calling sick on uh, through COVID and this delivery didn't turn up and whatnot. And they, they went through the the day of what went wrong and they apologized and people probably more likely to book after they've seen that explanation whereas if they didn't see it they, they just think oh they're not good I'm not going there again um try signing off with a name as well even if it's just your first name or a fake name just just sign off with a name so that it so that people know that there's a person behind the screen you can get off them a piece offering like a freebie or um a voucher just you know a, a bunch of flowers even to apologize if you've really cocked up because it is it is worth it in the end if they if they don't take the issue any further or if they give you a sort of a bit of a, neg a positive feedback 
stay positive and be kind and we've and we've talked about um sharing updates uh bad news if you have to do it but keep it human and offer an update at the end so if you have to close your shop for example the window's been broken or whatever tell them when it's reopening and uh or if you're off sick tell them when you're back um and remember negativity can help you to improve your business because you can take comments on board and use them as constructive criticism and and change your systems um so there's really good examples of this that windy arbor is a local farm shop near me who had to shut because of covid so they, he went on and did like a 20 minute video about how they were gutted to be closing and they tried really hard in the pandemic to stay open and all the rest of it so it got six and a half thousand views and loads of positive replies um t gate is an example of how it maybe went badly or maybe it didn't because it got yorkshire tea lots of publicity but they ended up arguing with uh, sue who was very angry about one of the it wasn't even their post, it was an MP who posted it up. Just uh, Google Yorkshire Tea yet and you'll find it. And then this one, Lillian Arthurs, who someone's complained about the price of a sandwich and they've gone in to explain what exactly goes into the sandwiches and the time it takes to make it. And we'll get, if you try one and don't like it, we'll give you money back. And someone said, um, well, you can't say fairer than that. And then she, and then the, the original poster has gone back to say, well, I appreciate that. It's obviously a treat um, and not just, you know, an everyday lunch. It's a um, special sandwich. And I appreciate the reply. So from what could have, you know, some people might have gone on there and attacked this, this lady and said, oh, you should... You, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Our, we, we have quality ingredients and, um, you know, you, you're talking rubbish. They haven't done that. They've, they've taken the time to explain and it's worked out really well. Um, some, there's some good examples of testimonials here as well. More good examples of testimonials and people using them brilliantly um, with a bit of uh, creativity. And um, there's a really bad example of how somebody um, replied to a complaint. It was Stagecoach who got a complaint about the bus being late. I think it was the bus. And they said, um, well, we do have seven days to respond to each email. Um, and our phone line is only open till half past, the, <laughs> half past five. But if we're already on the phone, then this will continue to ring. So they're basically admitting that the customer service is rubbish. So that's a kind of bad way of, of approaching a complaint. Um, and that's basically the end. I've, I've left you with an action plan, which um, will be on the end of the PowerPoint so that you can um, have, a, have a look at your different platforms um, Create, take some actions on each of the platforms, create some uh, lovely content and hopefully see a massive explosion in followers and sales. And it's just a little bit of a tracker really to keep to keep reminding you of um, how you could um, uh, be more creative and get more followers hopefully. And that's it. I was just going to finish by saying, are you following each other on social media? If you're not, um, or if you'd like to put your, your your accounts in the in the chat, make sure you're following everybody across all different platforms, and then we can help each other. And uh, that's the end of the session, Shelley. Thanks, Vicky. That was uh, as informative as ever. So um, thanks for packing so much into um, what was quite a long session, but yeah, so much in there. Um, very kind offer of, for people to get into in touch with you if they've got any more questions. So. Vicky's just put her handle on Twitter um, in the chat. So if you'd like to, if you'd like to get in touch with uh, Vicky that way, or via the various the social media channels, you can do. And yeah, time, me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Your your SEO is working well there. So, and in the meantime, yeah, thanks everyone for for attending, and we hope you've enjoyed the mm -hmm. session. And you'll. Um, hey, uh, hey Shelley, I want to, uh, I just want to share yeah. uh, um, um, during the. We're oh, breaking up there slightly. Uh, 
Oh, I can't. I don't know if you can hear Vicky. Um, you're you're breaking up for us. Can you hear me? No, I'm just I'm just going to stop recording. Right. So thanks very much, and we'll come back to you in a sec. Thanks everyone for joining this flourish session. <laughs>